Hey everybody, welcome to the shop. Um, Aaron is on vacation in Hawaii this week, so we're gonna put up a super simple, barely edited video, <laughs> since I don't wanna crack open Premiere and learn it. So, uh, say hi to Aaron, everybody. Hi, Aaron. Hi. Hey, John and Eric and everyone at the shop. Look at that, we made it for the sunrise at Diamond Head. How's everything at the shop? So normally Aaron hangs out in here. It's also our lunch room. Um, she's got a video she's working on about this rig. Uh, she used to edit on her laptop and then just last week, two weeks ago, we started buying components so she could build her own computer. Uh, very excited about that. Got it all set up right before she left, but didn't have time to get Windows on. So we've kind of been playing with, with it, um, trying to get it installed. And the quick update is Sky thinks that one of these three RAM cards, RAM chip set thingies, is bad. So we've got, it It did have four, what do you got, four 8 gigs, I think? Four 4 gigs? I can't remember what she got. Uh, 16 or 32. Anyway... Something's not right, because it will it will start loading Windows with only one RAM stick in it. Um, so I'm not sure what we've got to figure out, but that's the update on that. Um, Barry just came back with a Costco run. This, delicious, so delicious. Through our filthy shop window. It's dirty on the outside, I don't know how to clean it. Eric and Yo. Eric, Yo. Let's go see what they're up to. Got some knives on the website, ready to sell. All right, let's go see. What's everybody up to? Check on the mill. Oh yeah. Cutting blade bevels right now. We cut them when they're heat treated, so they're already super hard. Going good. Almost three hours on that cycle so far. Should go for about three and a half. Uh, the lathe is set up to make Saga tips. So Angelo got it all set up. We're gonna start making tips later today. Uh, a couple change out things like the drill. And yeah, super excited. Can't wait to make tips. I like how he did uh, little Kaizen foam thing for all of our uh, Allen keys and Torx keys. Very slick. We got dedicated micrometer, caliper, dial test indicator just for the lathe. Love it. Got the other ones over here for the mill. Got this sweet little depth gauge that my friend Amish gave me, or gave me, sold me, I can't remember, a couple years ago. Very nice. Second pallet ready to go. Let's see. This guy's lapping some pretty stuff in here. They're empty right now. Oh, this is new. Nothing. Oh yeah. We did heat treat today, every day. It's just uh, cooling off, I think. Or maybe it's ramping up. Because we're going to do a second batch as well later this afternoon. Yeah, it's getting hot again. So we got blades in temper right now. 
The uh, water-cooled quench blades are fantastic. I think we're going to have to go in and face these down again. So maybe every two months or so we should go and face them down once again. Because they get scuffed up. They wear down a little bit. That's fine. But we're doing a really good job of wiping them every time. We put this paper towel in between and we kind of store it like that and just walk away. Yeah, everything over here is going really, really well. Got the uh, laser welded stainless steel foil bags. Every knife goes in a bag. And then our bag of scrap bags goes in here. So that's what they look like afterwards. And the reason we put the bag in, put the blade in the bag, is to protect it um, from the super hot oxygen, because otherwise the oxygen's gonna eat the carbon in the steel, I think it is. So that way it eats, eats the bag and turns the bag all black and gross, and then the blade comes out looking absolutely perfect. comes out of heat treat looking just like that. What do you think about the ultrasonic? Uh, it's epic and it works uh, much better than me scrubbing everything by hand. Nice. <laughs> I think you told me it is literally everything you expected it to be. What were the words you used? I forget. <laughs> Something yeah. like that. Literally anyway. really better than I expected. Yep. Everything I wanted and more. No editing in this video. Look at that shiny. Any clips that I have, I'm gonna throw them together on my phone, make it super simple. It's a mirror. So if you look real close, it is swirly. It is micro scratched. We call it cracked glass. Like just the surface, you know, it's a mirror, but it does have some micro texture to it, but that comes out in the tumbler perfectly. Oh, going on. a lot of parts. Oh, yeah. Nice. So these ones are going to be two tone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Love it. <laughs> this guy here is the other thing we got. I think it's asleep. There we go. Oh yeah! What am I looking at? Damn steel. That's damn steel? Yeah, damn steel. So pretty. Do not engrave, because we don't want to engrave RWL on it accidentally. I had to move it because there's too many other ones. But yeah. Too many blades is not a problem. <laughs> See if we can catch that pattern. Thor pattern. Whee. All right. Yeah, so we bought a uh, pretty nicely specced uh, store-built computer. 
kind of an off-the-shelf thing at Canada Computers. Um, very happy with it. Got it kind of in that position. We might turn it around. I haven't decided yet. But it's super nice. I've got my laptop there. This computer here. Now Angelo and I can both work on computers at the same time. And yeah. You guys need to change the, the, everything, everything. Show me what you got. So these are my favorite um, paper towel holders. Get them from Amazon. So we've got like four or five of them here now. Just putting one here on the lathe cart because I'm like, I need paper towels here. I want blue ones. Yes. Sweet. Quick and dirty. Yep, it works. All the stickers. That's Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> stickers people sent us. Yeah. I'm not sure the Supreme sticker will drop. It's not really our style. <laughs> it's awesome. My Kennedy toolbox, thank you, John Saunders. Is holding our inventory. Pen parts, pen parts, pen parts. Titanium, nickel, aluminum, bronze, tie, tie. Stainless steel, 17.4. So this is what we got going on. The last things we have to make now are the tips, the tubes, and then the pocket clips. And then we'll have 50 plus pens ready to sell. Uh, hopefully by the end of this week, we'll have at least the tips and the tubes done. And then we'll work on the clips after that. I wanna get these bad boys selling. I'm very excited. It's been a year, a year. Love them. Here's some inventory of our round bar. Tubing for the titanium pens. Half inch titanium, three eighths titanium. We ran out of quarter inch titanium, but that's good because we don't need it anymore for the moment. But we'll get some more soon. Um, trying to balance the difference between buying from a titanium reseller or buying directly from the manufacturer. Um, there's upsides and downsides to both, so we're, we're playing with different batches, but this uh, 5 8 titanium is for the pocket clip on the pen. Should be a lot of pocket clips in there. Doing pretty good. And then here we've got our 17.4 pH, H900 heat treated, uh, quarter inch for the stop pins, 3 8 inch for the pivot on the Norseman knives, on the Rask knives, and also for the pen mechanism, the button. So the button on the pen is out of this 17.4 and the uh, threaded sleeve in there too. And then we've got this wicked nickel aluminum bronze material, which like my slider is made from that. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. I like it a lot. And yeah, we've got our mist fit, mist collectors working super good. Sucking the mist away and then draining it back into the machine. Uh, we've got the one on the mill as well. Things are going good. Pierce 360 logo. On my Autodesk backpack. Next to my Autodesk jacket. I'm a shill. No, I just love it. And they give me stuff. <laughs> All right. One of my favorite tools in the shop is my Leica microscope. I adore this thing. Use it all the time. And literally when I'm looking at stuff, I'll just uh, put the thing up the eyepiece. Actually, um, I don't know where the rest of it is, but there's this really cool guy that he has a Haas mini mill in his garage and he plays musical instruments in a, um, a huge orchestra band. And he, just for fun, he makes adapters to mount your cell phone onto the eyepiece of the thing. I don't know where it is. I forget. I think Angelo put it somewhere. But anyway, it's it's a case that holds the phone and will mount it right to there and allow you to easily like pop it on and focus and stuff. Um, so very cool. Very cool. I'm looking forward to trying that out properly. 
Uh, he sent some adapters because my eyepieces were a little bit different than what he was expecting. So, yeah. How cool is that? Sent to us by Rapid Parts up in uh, Toronto. Very cool guy. Thank you so much for that again. Years ago, like five, five years ago, he probably sent that. How's the mill doing? A few minutes later, now milling on the other side of the pallet, the other blade. Up to three hours, eight minutes. Going good. Solid. Who remembers this guy? We actually haven't used it very much, mostly because we haven't taken the time to put an airline to it and actually properly plumb it up. Um, but I really want to. I'm excited to get this thing used. So yeah, that's a bit of a quick update for the shop. A bit of a no editing, keep it simple. Um, Aaron's not here video. Let's go in here. We can have a little heart to heart. Lunchroom. We actually, uh, we pretty much make our lunch every day. Some of us bring in lunch, but Barry does Costco runs and we go buy lots of food and we buy chicken and wraps and uh, vegetables and fruits and I like it. I like it a lot. I, I think we got a really good thing going on here. Maybe we should continue, you know? Maybe this thing will work out. Um, no, the business is going great. Like, today is... What is today? March 11th, 2019. I'll probably put this up today. Um, man, things are fantastic. Like, we've been in business now for almost... 2011 to 2019, whatever that is. Eight years. Um as of kind of the summertime, like June. Focus. <laughs> um, yeah, eight years, holy cow. And then before that, I was kind of a struggling entrepreneur for 10 years before that. So it's it's been a road, it's been a road. And the funny thing is, I feel like we're just getting started. Like we've got a really good rhythm right now. We're making good product, like great products at a good pace. Uh, we're finishing knives every single day. And we're just rolling. We're just rolling. Ah, things are, things are fun. Things are fun. There's certainly stressful times. There's certainly issues and problems and broken tools. And uh, you know, there's there's no doubt you get seven people in a room, and there's always going to be little bickering back and forth. But that's great. It's awesome. And we deal with it, and it's great. And we all we all really appreciate each other. Um, but as the leader, as the boss, it's kind of a challenge sometimes to make everything flow and like not run out of material and uh, you know make sure that you have the cash to do all the decisions you're making long term um, but that's what I love about this I love making the product I love putting together the plan I love executing it and I love seeing the fruits of all that labor actually come to, to, to bear fruit after eight years um, I'm saying um a lot. I should probably stop doing that. But since we're not going to edit, um, um, um. I'm not sure. I'm just kind of rambling. Not sure what else to talk about. But I got some big plans coming up. Big plans. Like I said, I feel like we're just getting started. Uh, I want to get these pens going like crazy. I honestly, from a business side of things, I think these things are going to sell like crazy. Uh, it's a very, it's a very expensive, high end product and. It's really nice, and everybody that I shows it to, that I show it to, and everybody who owns one, um, all 25 of you or whatever out there, loves them. So I'm super excited for this pen. There's, like I said, it's been a year since I started making it. It was like February last year, a year and a month, um, that we've been working on this, which is far longer than I ever expected. But I'm kind of ramping up for this, this production of pens on top of the knives. The knife, knife production cannot drop to do this. It needs to hold, continue to ever so slightly grow. Last week was our biggest production week ever. 
we made more knives and we sold more knives in a single steady week than we've ever done before. It's awesome. Like, these are good. Add pens on top of that. It's going to stress the system. Um, we're going to have to work harder. We're going to have to be smarter. There's more shipping. There's more materials to buy. There's more parts to make. There's more parts to clean and anodize and assemble. Assembly is going to be a bit of a bottleneck because they're kind of tricky to assemble, but um, we'll manage. We got seven people here. Not everybody's running around with their head on fire um, all the time. So we'll make this happen. You guys that want one of these, we'll make it happen. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just be patient. Patience is a virtue. And that's what we got to do. Um, yeah. I don't know. Saunders and I, John Saunders from NYC CNC YouTube channel, um, we have our podcast every week, Business of Machining. And so we talk about this kind of stuff, you know, hey, what's going on? What's, what's the update? What kind of problems are you having? What are you thinking about for the future? We talk about that a lot, every week. Um, so if you haven't heard that, you kind of are interested in sort of the stuff I'm talking about right now, every week we talk about that kind of stuff on the podcast from both perspectives, his and mine. And sometimes we'll kind of yell at each other and be like, dude, you really need to do this. Why are you waiting so long to do this? Or, you know, maybe pull back on that or focus on this or stop wasting time, etc. Um, so I greatly admire the chance to talk with him uh, every week and figure out kind of how to be a better entrepreneur, better business person, better machinist, better product designer, everything. Um, and I think the... The help that we get from each other and the community that we've formed of all these other Insta machinists and YouTube machinists and guys all around the world doing amazing things and asking each other for help and sharing that information has been transformative. Like, I'm a clever guy, but I'm clever with help, you know? If I have a question, I'll ask somebody. So I like to, I, I love that we have this network of people together. So if I have a question, I know exactly who to ask or three people to ask. And sometimes I've got three different answers and then I have to um, deduce which one I want to go with. And sometimes, you know, at the end of the day, as, as a business owner, you just, you have to look at two great options and they could be opposites and you, you just have to pick. And it's very difficult. Sometimes, like, what do you want for lunch? I don't know. Sometimes it's like stupidly difficult, um, but sometimes it's really big and complicated and expensive and, you know, you got two hard choices, and progress beats dilly-dallying. I am usually much more like, jump in both feet first and just start, just try something, as opposed to like, overly think and plan and analyze, and that's gotten me into some hot water sometimes, because I'm too, not aggressive, but I'm too forward testing. You know, I just wanna try something, I just wanna go out and try it and it might fail, and I might lose money, or I might uh, waste time, and that happens all the time, but I'd like to think that that has led to a lot of the progress that we're seeing, because we're trying, we're not status quo. We are changing and improving and analyzing and upgrading every single day. We have a 12 o'clock meeting now, get the whole team together at 12 o'clock, and uh, kind of say, you know, What's going on? What do you need? How are things going? What was our production yesterday? Um, you know, do you need anything to do your job better? Now is the time to share with that, uh, share that with the team, and then you get the team's kind of perspective of, well, maybe you should try it like this or like this, and you get a lot of good ideas from one little group session meeting. Um, and sometimes it's like our little, you know, therapy session, like oh, I'm having a problem with this or. Um, I keep breaking tools, I don't know what the problem is. And then somebody will suggest some random thing and be like, that actually worked, that was great. So, yeah, I like our daily meetings. I struggled with that for a long time to, uh, to set that up and to see if we could do it. You know, sometimes it was first thing in the morning, but everybody comes in at slightly different times, so that doesn't work. Hey, Barry. Hi. I'm just having a heart-to-heart -heart with the camera. Oops. Hi, camera. But yeah, you want to join me? Here. Oh, I, I... Join me for a second. Come on. All right. Pull up a chair. Close the door. Can't say no to the boss. There you go. 
You like to boast about us. I'll give you a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Who me? <laughs> Mild mannered. Yeah. So our Kent Superman. <laughs> Barry was our first hire. It was just Eric and I, and we were like, oh, we need we need somebody. We need help. We need people. And uh, my father-in-law, my wife's dad, um, offered, you know, and you've got experience doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So then it was the three of us for a year, and uh, it wasn't always the easiest, <laughs> but we were at a stressful time with the Rask pre-order and everything, and uh, yeah, but we pulled through it. You know, we developed a great plan, and yeah. uh, Eric and you and me are a good working team. We've got a lot of good ideas. And uh, we just stuck to it. Absolutely. We just stuck, worked hard, and uh, got through that pre-order. And uh, as I say, the rest is history. But. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting on, on video because you don't always want to, like people might look at the company now and be like, wow, you're so you know, big and successful and you make a lot of stuff and you have so many people. It must have always been like that. <laughs> you know? It feels like that now. <laughs> now it does. Like it's easy to forget, forget the past. But uh, we went from three to four to five to six to seven, and uh, yeah, it was it, it, it happened very quickly. It but, did. Uh, it seemed. I mean, the past year has flown by. But I'm like happy it today, we talked about two and a half months to Blade Show. I mean, yeah. we can't believe it's almost on us. So it's crazy. I'm pretty excited to be there because I missed out the first two, but not this year. Yep, you're coming. <laughs> Every, everybody's uh, coming. The whole I'll, team. Well, I'll be here this year for yep. sure. Looking so, forward to meeting everybody. Exactly. So, yes. Yeah, so if you guys are coming to Blade, obviously you won't miss us. Don't worry. We'll be there in, yep. uh, in full force for sure. Exactly. So, um, yeah. Anything you're excited about for the present or coming future? Well, you know. Uh, as I, as I said, details, you, <laughs> you, you and I just, I, I just feel we work really well, me with my financial background, you with your ingenious uh, programming and design and stuff, it's a good match and yep. between the two of us we're just really able to set realistic goals that, that, that fit in well with, with, with managed growth and it's just exciting yep. to see how that's, you know, one by one falling into place and, and, and it's just we are at such an exciting time with our company and uh, yeah. and uh, we don't know what the limits are even. No, exactly. And that's the funny thing. It's like you keep getting to the next level and you're like, whoa, it's like the sky's still blue up here. <laughs> you know, like we can keep going. The problem with my with my son-in-law is he's going Mach 2 with his hair on fire and I'm just trying to keep up. And yep. uh, it's just exciting to be part of this and certainly John took a, a chance on uh, on his on his nepotism hire. But yeah. <laughs> I think it's working out fairly well and after two years he finally told me I wasn't on probation anymore exactly. so <laughs> that was a sigh of relief for me because yep. I didn't know what I'd do but it's it, you have an amazing staff you know we've added one person at a time and carefully selected them and John and Eric have gone through in great detail what our needs are and every person we've added has yeah. just been an amazing um, not only addition but you know they bring their own experience with them and 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 they're as excited as we are yeah. um, it's great to, to move see. this company forward. Yeah. So it, it, it's just... I mean, you guys might not get that from your perspective of the video because everybody's kind of shy on video. I mean, you're shy on video sometimes too, so you don't always get the, the true self from everybody here in the shop. Um, but we're pushing. We're trying to film more. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, I've been filming myself for the past eight years, and I'm just more comfortable talking to the camera just because experience. But... Well, in my video on the heat treat, I, was, I was really lucky because Erin was just awesome. She kind of fed me the questions and make sure I kind of stayed on point and didn't yep. get wandering off. And uh, I was really nervous for sure. But yeah. after uh, she gave me that comfort level of saying, okay, just, just kind of relax exactly. and here's how we're going to do this in sections. And I was kind of having fun at the end. Exactly. So. <laughs> yes, that's what I like. Yeah. It was a great video. I really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, good. No good. I had, I had nothing to do with that video. I just watched the finished video and I was like, sweet. It's cool. Well, I said, I couldn't have done it without Aaron's help. Yeah. I just, I wouldn't have known where to go. But every process at Grinsville Knives, it's just, we fine tune it and yes. fine tune it. And that's the thing. And we don't kind of say it's good enough. It's no. just never good enough if we can move it just to the next goal post, yep. you know. Yep. And that's what's exciting about it. And and you know we have these daily meetings and it's always it's always good because John reads these emails and, and testimonials we get from customers and yeah. you know you can have a smile on your face and you say this is why we come to work every day exactly yeah 
try to give try to remind everybody what the reasons are and, and what the actual impact we're attempting to have on the industry is. And you know, you hear these great emails from the customers saying uh, all kinds of amazing things. You know, we post some of them on our website. Um, but our customers are typically extraordinarily <laughs> happy. Oh, that's an understatement for exactly. sure. But, uh, like, you know, like even when one guy's hung up on a little shipping issue, like I was supposed to be here today and it's not here today, I'm so angry. And then he gets it and he's like, okay, this is the greatest thing ever. I am so happy with this thing. <laughs> we wish we could account for the mail delivery. We do our best no, to, exactly, right? you know, once you receive the order, uh, you know, nine times out of 10, 99% of the time, we have it shipped within 24 hours. So yep. we really work hard to make sure we know the customer's waiting for their knife and we want to make sure that uh, we don't delay it once, uh, once the green light's on. So. Exactly. And that ties to the whole turnaround thing of everything we do in the business. We're trying to get down to a relatively one-piece flow um, production schedule. So parts get made every single day. Parts get heat treated. You do the heat treat every single day. Um, you know, we we mill parts every day. We don't do batch work anymore when we can when we can help it. Sky does lapping every day, and Eric finishes knives every single day, and then you ship them every day too. Yeah, I mean, I, I think from that perspective, I mean, John and I have some pretty heavy-duty meetings in terms of forecasting, production, and, and uh, you know, dealing with reality as to what, what happens. And finally, in January and February, and now in March, it, everything seems to have just yeah. gelled. It's come to fruition, and we just have a really smooth operation now. And yeah. everybody has their part. Everybody knows what to do. People help each other, and... And sometimes you can even take vacation, and somebody kind of backs you up, which Aaron. is really, <laughs> which is really good. I'm picking up Aaron's slack right now. Uh, doing the no, but it's great. It yeah, is nice. Like I, I can yeah. go away on a trip for a couple of days or a week, and I know the shop is still rocking. And you went to Mexico a couple of weeks ago yeah. for a week, and easily picked up the slack. Everybody knows what to do. The processes are well enough defined that we can share responsibilities. And uh, I want to improve that and get better and better and better at that. Well, we, we certainly have made great strides since I came on board two yeah, years ago, right. so uh, it, uh, it, it never ceases to amaze me how we just keep getting better and better and more efficient. And I think and, we just uh, have this hunger. Yeah, I think you're you right. Know? I and think that's what it is. You're always kind of hungry and thirsty for more. And it, it's, not, it's not a greed thing, and it's not like growth for growth's sake. It's just, I, I know I can do better. I know this process can be better. I know we can turn around faster. I know we can do this better. You know? and, and we have so many loyal customers waiting to be yeah. picked and waiting for a knife that you know we're trying to to increase our production in 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 a sustainable manner but we just know how many people are just anxious to get a knife exactly. and, and soon it'll be a pen and and yep. uh, you know it's, it's it, I always say to John you know I really enjoy coming to work every day because we yep. just we have challenges and sometimes everything doesn't go perfect but we brainstorm and we got a lot of really smart people with different backgrounds and the next thing you know we have a solution on the table and we're getting it fixed so that's that, that's really just a testament to how dedicated the people that work here are yeah. and how much fun it is i mean we we laugh and joke and have fun but we're serious about about the products we make and 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 uh, keeping them at full grimswell in terms in terms yes. of just the best of the best i just had a really weird like moment in my head when you said the people that work here and I'm like, this is this is my here. Like, I was always going to be the guy in the garage, just by myself for the rest of my life. I'll be happy. And now I'm even happier with this team and this crew and this group of people who comes to work and they're excited and they're kind of bouncing around. You know, not every day, but on the great days, it's great. Well, John, I remember a few years ago visiting uh, uh, you and my daughter and the grandkids and you and Eric are in that garage with and the heater I don't think was in and I pop my head and I go boy you guys are just you're yeah. killing it and you're freezing and uh, you know and look where we are not too many years later I mean it's just you got to pinch yourself sometimes yep. but it, it uh, you know it, John and, and, and my biggest challenge is is trying to make sure that that we see the future of the company and we work towards a growth pattern that will really work for everybody and yep. I think that that's that's the key is we don't want to expand too quickly and then we don't want to not expand exactly. at a rate that we've got all these people that are that it's are the so, potential right yep, like the yep. potential is there and we know that when we start making these we'll be able to sell a lot of them yeah so why wait you yep. know but you don't want to grow too quickly and like reduce all your resources all your people time to not be able to sustain it so we have to actually like spend a lot of time working on the business and thinking about this as opposed to just being kind of so busy in the business that you're not 
you know, seeing what's going on. What's really interesting with, with the relationship with John and myself is, I, you know, I, I have over 40 years of financial experience and John has this wealth of experience developing programs and CNC machining and stuff. And I think he finally came to the realization that the team, both of us together, really make it work in term, terms of financial stability and making sure that we can grow and that we do it in a manner that's that, that isn't stressful to us now. And, and, right. and I think John, uh, John, I'm trying to teach him a lot of part of the financial management of the company and that, so he really understands the mechanics of how important right. working capital and cash flow is. And it's kind of fun, you know, it's to, fun now, to like, see that going. Like financial and accounting used to be like, ah, oh, la, 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 I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to know. <laughs> Just hand the box of, of receipts to your bookkeeper at the end of every year. Um, but now that I've had you on board for two years and we sit down, like, if not daily, at least a couple times a week yep. and go over the numbers and the, the cash flow and the forecast and just, I, I completely understand what's going on now, especially as we're growing and our salary is gigantic, like, like our payroll <laughs> oh, yeah. is gigantic with seven <laughs> Just people. ask me, I'll tell you. Exactly. We're doing payroll and, shortly. you know, we greatly respect our people too. So it's expensive and it's there's a lot of numbers and a lot of dollars everywhere and there's like little fingers just everywhere <laughs> that has to be managed properly um, and I'm glad we can I'm glad we're doing it very well uh, we, we try a five minute meeting we do an executive summary and we yep. do the real we, we, we zero on the real key stuff uh, the first Monday is a, a big meeting always with John and myself with what happened last week uh, how close were we to forecast and how does it look yep. where and are we going this week what's coming up this week yep. you know is, is it a payroll week or whatever um, machine payments coming out um, anything like that yeah but they, like we're, we're going through right now we're doing a, a batch of material order which should be like three four months of material so that's a lot of expense now that we're not gonna have to spend next month and two months and three months um, yeah but um, it, it's really kind of fun to show how we, I've developed with John a, a cash flow forecasting system. So he just pulls the spreadsheet up and he can go through it on his own. And, and he really sees the mechanics of, of how we, each week works with the sales and the expenses and payroll and, and stuff. And, and yep. it's given him, I mean, he, he's a quick learner for sure. But I mean, it gives him such a good grasp now of a whole business. Yeah. You know, production side is so important, but that other side, he just... I think he's, he's like a sponge. He just wants to suck as much I do. as he can up. And uh, Once you start to like something or you tell yourself that you like it, then I just get really thirsty and I just want to know all about it. But but I think it's that part of the business that maybe you didn't know enough about it to really oh, sure. appreciate what it was, but now that you see it, you know that, oh, yeah. that that's critical. a big part of success as the production is. And it's like, just, now I understand why big companies have a CFO and have like an accounting department and why it's all important because you know you taking care of that here if, if that were still a black hole we wouldn't be where we are you know? it, it would be like my because our sales are just growing in a way that we, you know we we can't foresee yeah. as I keep saying to John look at the extra paperwork that's coming across my desk every day I'm running down to do heat treat coming up and and so it's really interesting to see how that's mapping itself out, but always in a positive, uh, good way, to, because it's measuring our success. Yeah. And, and I think that's what that's the thrill of seeing, you know, our forecasting and how close we are. And, yeah, exactly. And I always like to be under forecasting because <laughs> when we do real better, I look good. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the, the great thing with having consistent production and consistent cash flow, which is something you beat into our heads early on. You know, he'd make these sheets that we put on the wall saying, how many knives did you do today? You know, write it down, even if it's a big fat zero. Um, and then now it's like, no brainer. Like, we couldn't not do that anymore. So consistent production, consistent sales, consistent cash flow. You know, your bills are coming up every month. Everybody's got to be paid every two weeks. Um, the machines payments come out, credit cards are due. You know, like everything is consistent, so why wouldn't you make your production consistent too? Exactly. You know, we used to be in this batch work where we'd make like, you know, 10, 20, 30 knives at once. Yay, we're rich! And then the money just goes away, <laughs> and then we have a few months of downtime with no money, and that's not sustainable. And I think it was interesting when we first, when I first started, it was hard because, as I said, the boys resisted me because I'm a numbers guy, so everything is directed towards what's our break even point? How many right. knives do we have to make every day? to meet our fixed expenses so yep. it was so foreign to the guys that they resisted me for a while but i didn't give up no it was and good now they realize that anything we do in a forecasting we can now measure it by the number of knives of production yeah so one knife of reduction equals so much and we're able to simplify 
and bring it to a real easy calculation, which, which, which is really, as, as we see, it, 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 it's the real essence of us moving forward and being able to calculate uh, with a great degree of accuracy exactly. uh, where, where we need to be and, and to do it in a manner that is comfortable with the overall uh, financial wealth, health of the company. Exactly, and, and as, as you grow from being like by yourself, like I know a lot of you guys watching are just the guy in your garage like I was you know, seven years ago. Um, as you grow and things get a lot more serious and a lot, you know, if we go for a month, you know, we're okay, but if we go for a month without business, without money, it wouldn't be okay. <laughs> it would be stressful to it say the stressful. least. But, uh, um, but yeah, I'm just trying to think of, you know, what, what we could say to the guys that are early in their business career. I don't know if you ever want to be as big as <clears throat> us or grow more, but you've got to manage this stuff. Um, I have some teaching experience and one of the favorite courses I used to teach was financial management which yeah. covers all the bases that I'm, I'm working with John on so if I was to give any advice of you entrepreneurs that are just starting your business is too small to afford like a, an accounting person but spend the money for an investment to work out the numbers of your break-even your fixed and variable yeah. overhead your your profit well, margin yourself like yeah and, and, and but just initial small amount of money to get you started so that you're out of the gate and you know exactly where you are and where you're going it's the best money you'll spend yeah yeah I used to loosely manage it myself like okay I know all these bills come out here but until you actually have it in a spreadsheet or in some system or whatever it gets it out of your head and onto paper and lets you actually manage it properly. Otherwise, you're kind of guessing and you're like, yeah, I think, I think that's good, and blah, blah, blah. And as the system gets more complicated, it's like yeah. 20 or 30 things that are coming out at various times during the month. Yep. It's important that our cash flow forecast is hitting the amount where the money's available and we're making the payment and, and our bankers and everybody else are happy. So, yeah. so we, we do a one a complete year's financial working capital uh, and, and cash flow forecast actually by week, by Friday of every week. So it, it, it's working out quite well, because I think uh, John's made some really good fine tuning. I, I think too much like an accountant, but John's thinking like the business person that says, uh, what about this and how about that? And it's really well, helped. I want to see those numbers in a way that makes sense to me, because otherwise they're just all numbers. It's like, well, that's too much information. But if you can distill it or add these two together or show me a pie chart with whatever, yep. um, it's at the end of the day, it's kind of amazing how relatively simple it is. But it's, it has to be there. Like, you need all that information, you know? As, as much of my, uh, my long accounting career as I like to simplify things for, for customers and clients and, 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 and entrepreneurs so that they're not scared of it. And that right. they have a good handle on what they need to succeed. And, well, and now, that it's, now that it's fun to analyze and look at all yeah. that. I'm a numbers guy too, like all the CNC code and stuff, dimensions and measurements. But you put that love now to numbers and money and... and uh, management of that and it becomes really fun and exciting yeah it, it's been uh, I mean it just it, it just gets better every every week I, I, I've always yeah. said to John I, I just love gum, coming into work every day there's always something that's that's different or and and it, it, it's just to see where we're going it's it's, it's hard to uh, express uh, how much fun that is to see this the, a, a growing company with no boundaries is just yeah you know it, it's an accountant's dream really really Yep. Yeah, so we got big crazy plans for the future and uh, we're going to manage it very well and uh, not be too aggressive but not be too passive and we're going to find a probably slightly erring more to the aggressive side than the passive side but find this balance. You know, I'm pushing so hard and he's kind of pulling me back a little bit but it's good. <laughs> Just a little bit. But, it's really good. But John knows that, 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 that I'm a team guy that realizes that you need to spend money to make money and because we have really solid plans and we work well together in terms of being realistic in what we can accomplish right. and being conservative that you know expanding is not a scary moment for us no, anymore. exactly exactly yeah all right all right well thank you for letting me in on, no on the video a bit and, of an uh, impromptu and, love it uh, yeah he dragged me in and i said i don't have any notes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i gotta tell you i i uh, i enjoy working with my son-in-law a lot of people say that you know family businesses are hard but you know what when we respect our, our backgrounds and what we bring to the table yeah it makes it easy to really make this thing work and, and exactly uh, and, and you said it right there like it can be very difficult but that level of respect amongst each other amongst everybody to the customer to the process respect is, is key yeah. and if you remember a few months ago we finally we were communicating but 
we weren't really understanding what the other person right. was saying, right? So one day we just had a sit down meeting and, and just put it on the table and said, yep. you know, it's like we're banging our heads. Against, it's like we're competing against each exactly. other. You remember yeah, that I meeting? Do. It was difficult. And we said, we are on the same team yep. and we respect our, our, our various expertise areas. And, and I think that that was a game changer a game that changer. day. We really realized yep. that. I, I uh, might have shed a tear during that meeting. Uh, well, I uh, had Kleenex out too, I yeah. think so. <laughs> but sometimes you have to. I mean, Eric and I do that too. You know, we, we kind of go quiet for a couple of days or weeks, and then eventually we just have this long conversation yeah. and get it all out. But the, the better that is, the, the faster the communication turnaround yeah. time is, um, the better everybody is. Because otherwise you dwell and you sit and you worry and you get mad and all this stuff, and it's stupid. Yep. And it, it doesn't is. help anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, and John and I, I mean, since that day, I mean, we've had just a, yeah. an amazing relationship in terms of understanding... Uh, uh, where we're coming from, where we're going, and I mean, it's just been, it, it, you know, to be part of the family dynamic, and 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 you guys let me in a few years ago. It, it was it, it was a scary moment because obviously I didn't want to disappoint, but right. you know, we we've come a long way, and there's so much further to go, and I think exactly. that's that's the part that uh, uh, John that's scared so John scared because he said I don't want to retire anytime soon now. So yeah. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, Hopefully we're going to make that work, but oh, we got a lot it. of amazing oh, things yeah. on the table we sure do. this year. Top eh, John secret. and boy, top secret, and and uh, we work hard at it. John, John really, um, he's the visionary, and uh, every now and then I say, John, we have to go for breakfast because I have no idea what's in that brain of yours. And yeah, you got to catch tell, up. You got to catch me up because yeah. uh, I got some new stuff for you, by the way. <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry. I yeah. Anyway, I'm give my son-in-law a hug, and I'm so proud of him and. Uh, and uh, let's get this Grimsmo company uh, to places that we never imagined, John. Exactly. It's, it's Sky's like, the limit. Yep, yep, we're there. All right, All right, I'm off. I have work to do. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you for letting me in, John. Have a good one, guys. You got it. I will now edit this on my phone and upload it today. Later, guys.